So on your second circle, <clears throat> I want you to draw, um, this is a bit tricky, um, I want you to draw a secant, something like this. Draw me a secant. Okay. And then that's actually not my whiteboard marker. That's actually a dent in the whiteboard. I want you to put the center of your circle onto here. Okay. Then I want you to connect up some radii, like so. And then lastly, beside this diagram, if you have space, draw a little circle. Because I'm just going to illustrate for you the property we're going to prove with this circle here. Okay? This is about tangents. Draw me a tangent. Any tangent? I'll draw this one, I guess. Here's a tangent. Now the tangent intersects with the circle exactly once. What I'd like you to draw is the radius of the circle to that intersection point. So if the center is here, then the radius is going to come down toward the tangent like so. Okay, radius, tangent. The radius and the tangent are related to each other. They're um, not just out in any random direction. What does the angle look like between the radius and the tangent? What's it look like? It looks perpendicular, doesn't it? It looks like it's a right angle. So how will we go about proving this? Okay, well, we're going to use this diagram. So here is a secant. It's not a tangent, but secants and tangents are quite closely related together. Have a look at this uh, triangle we've created in here. What kind of a triangle is this triangle? Isosceles. It's isosceles because it has two radii forming two lengths, right? So therefore it stands to reason that if I call this angle up here theta, right, I should be able to find the other two angles, the base angles, in terms of theta. What would I have, what would I have them be? Let's call this O, P, Q. How would I find the size of angle OPQ? How would I do it? Any suggestions? Yep. I'm going to write it over here. 180 minus theta divided by 2. So that's um, 90 take away theta on 2. Uh, does that check out? If this is 90 minus theta on 2, then this should also be 90 minus theta on 2, yes? 90 minus theta on 2. But that means, that means, that if I add up all of these, do I get the 180 that I'm after? Does it work? Because the 90s will add up to 180, the theta on 2s and the theta will cancel out. Does that look good? It's okay. All right, now, lastly, onto this diagram. If we know these inside angles, then what are these outside angles over here? What's their size? Do you want a straight line, the tangent? So you, you can think about this two ways. Uh, you can think about this angle, for instance, as the sum of the opposite two interior ones. You can do that. Or just as easily, because we already have this angle, you can think about these guys as angles that add up to 180 degrees. Because, what's the reason? Angles on a straight line, okay? So that means, what are they equal to? This one here. 90 plus. Very good, theta on two. Okay, now, here's what I need you to imagine. Take your pair of compasses. You got your pair of compasses there, right? <clears throat> what I want you to do is something weird, something that's not really the design of the pair of compasses. I want you to take your pair of compasses and I actually want you to put them not onto the page like you're used to, but I want you to put them, lay it over the page on top of your um, center, like this, okay? So I want you to imagine the arms of your pair of compasses as the arms of this angle, OP and OQ, all right? Now I want you to picture what happens if you take this guy and you start to close the pair of compasses, right? Now as you close it, what is happening to theta? It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. At a certain point when you've closed it, what's theta equal to? Zero, right? 
But when you close the compass, right? When you close the compass, do you notice what happens to this triangle, right? This, um, this, this pair of sides here, need more colors, this will do. As theta gets smaller and smaller and smaller, for example, you'll, at some point you'll get a triangle that looks like this, right? So PQ is going to look like that. At a certain point, if you keep going, you're going to get a really, really narrow triangle where P and Q are even closer together. When theta is zero, what happens to P and Q? Aren't they both on exactly the same spot? Does that make sense? When theta is zero, when theta is zero, P and Q, the word we would use is they coincide. Let's actually write that. When theta equals zero, P and Q coincide. They're at the same place, right? We can write this in another way. And this is language that you're again going to encounter next year, um, something called a limit, right? We would say as theta approaches zero, see that arrow? It means theta is going towards zero. P approaches Q. Does that make sense? Let me say it again. When theta approaches zero, P approaches Q. That makes sense. And eventually they land on top of one another. Okay. Well, when theta is zero, what happens to these outside angles that we were looking at before? What happens to this guy when theta is zero? It just becomes 90. It becomes exactly 90. Because look, it's 90 plus this thing, which is becoming zero, right? So that, that angle there corresponds to this angle over here. Do you see it? It's, on the, out, it's the exterior angle of your triangle, except you don't have a triangle anymore. It's just a straight line. Of course, theta on 2 is 0. So that's why you have the right angle that we were seeking to prove. Does that make sense? 